In that definition, Philip Weidmeier and Honisha Schwara would be considered homoheterogenesis because we have we show all of those traits. Are we homoheterogenesis? We have an expansion of the parietal elevation of the lambda. All these traits are shared with you and with me. So are we Philip Weidmeier and Honisha Schwara homoheterogenesis as well? Well, speaking only for myself, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, my intent here is not to diagnose Homo heidelbergensis oh. or any other species, but simply to point to some of the characters, uh, vault characters particularly, uh, that we should pay more attention to because they are independent from a simple uh, process of brain size increase. I, I diagnose Homo heidelbergensis a little differently. Uh, that wasn't really the subject of the talk. Towards a definition, yes. meaning that we should emphasize certain characters but not others. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm still happy as Homo sapiens. Fine, <laughs> fine. And the, uh, um, another question, a very simple one. How do you know that the mandible of a Petrogona or Broken Hill is like the type of specimen of homoheterogenesis. How do you know that Petalona and, uh, uh, and Brockenfield had a jaw like marble? How do you know it? In the case of Petalona, of course, there is no mandible. Uh, so? No, no comparison is possible. The same is true for Broken Hill. We are in a bind. I recognize that. I understand fully implications of the fact that the, the type for Homo heidelbergensis is simply a mandible, it's very nice to mandible, but there, there is a good deal of, of difficulty introduced because of that. And I think that we must proceed by comparing the Maurer jaw with other jaws from Europe. There are jaws, of course, from the SEMA. Uh, we heard this morning that perhaps there are some similarities. Uh, maybe the same is true for our jaws. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the details, but mm -hmm. because Michael the, the, the question of Homo heidelbergensis is, is the status of Homo heidelbergensis is, is a problem, but the species is not simply going to disappear from the landscape. No, no, it's not going to disappear, but there are many species that have been dropped because they were finally considered durian or non useful. There are lots of species that have disappeared in the past. Yes. In fact, these species have disappeared before uh, its resurrection. But my, my conclusion from your, from your uh, lecture was that Petrarona is Homo rhodesiensis because the similarity that can be <coughs> discussed between the two skulls points to um, the same species for both skulls. And Broken Hill has a specific name, Homo rhodesiensis. So my conclusion would be that Petroloma is Homo rhodesiensis. Could it be? Homo rhodesiensis is, is, as far as I know, a valid nomen that can be used. Mm -hmm. Homo heidelbergensis would take priority. That's the only point. It depends on, it depends on whether the, the Maori jaw is included with the African forms or not. Well, if not, then either way, really, if material can be considered separately as a species, if we prefer to do that, then it could be homo rhodesiensis. There is a, Thank you. a fine type specimen for that. Thank you. Oui, toutes les conférences de la journée sont consacrées à une définition un peu des homo rhodesiensis. Alors je pense qu'on va laisser continuer les discussions. C'est maintenant M. Ignacio Martinez Benizabal qui nous va parler du basicrane des homoïdes Mais ce soir, à la fin du, des conférences, à la fin des conférences, nous pourrions avoir une large discussion sur la signification de l'homoïde <rire>